Hey everyone, welcome back to Coded Row. In this video, we're gonna be going over how to create a peer-to-peer -peer connection or using Steam Listen servers in Unreal Engine 5. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna hit game, start with a third person project using 5.4.3, and I'll call this something like Thick or S-I-K-K, -K because I already had one called S-I-K, and I'll just hit Create Project. And now what I need to do is check out the description in the link below so that you can download this GitHub file. So I'll link the guide. This is actually the guide to follow if you have any trouble in this video, and I'll link you the description as well, and I'll link you the GitHub as well, which is gonna be this GitHub by Btide Studio slash Theme Integration Kit. Go ahead, go to code. Click download zip. And now what I'm gonna do is just right click in my content browser, select show in Explorer, and this will open up our project file. I'll go up one to the main folder. I don't wanna be in content and right click and select new folder. And I'll just call this plugins. And then I'll go into the plugins and I'm gonna paste the extracted version of the zip file that I downloaded from this GitHub here. So once you download this, extract it and then add that into your plugins folder like so. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and close this and make a few modifications in the plugin. So when you open up your other person map, I'm gonna go to plugins. And I also wanna turn on Steam Socket, just like this. Steam Sockets needs to be enabled. If you are using the Epic Marketplace version, this will automatically enable for you. But in the GitHub version, it's not. So I'm just gonna check this and click restart now. And once that's done, I'll just go over to my plugins and look for the Steam integration kit, which has a check next to it, along with Steam sockets. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go to my third person map and I'm just gonna go to my edit and go to editor preferences. And I'm just gonna go to edit project settings. And then now down here under game, you'll see something called Steam integration kit. You can use your Steam app ID 480, or you can use whichever one you're using for Steam. So I made a Steamworks account, uh, partner.steamgames.com. And then you can sign up with Steam to have your own app. Uh, I'm just using a dummy app. You can't connect to this because I have to give you permission. And when you test this on a second account, you will have to invite them. In your case, you can just use 480 and you might need to just search through to find your own app because this is the development ID, which is used by multiple people testing on this. But in my case, I'm going to set the Steam app ID to my respective app ID that I have on my Steamworks account. And if you are leaving this at 480, please change it to 481 or something and then change it back to 480 because this will only get generated in your game default engine.ini once there is a change made. So I'm just gonna go ahead and after changing that Steam app ID, I'm gonna go ahead and close this and reopen it like so. So I'll double click to open this up and I'll go to my config and open the default engine.ini. And I'll right click open this with VS Code, for example. And now when I open this, and expand it all the way. You'll see when I scroll all the way down, it'll show this online subsystem Steam and my Steam dev app ID and app ID are right here. Yours should have updated to 480 if you changed it and then relaunch or change it, change it back and then relaunch. And that's just assuming you don't have a Steam dev app ID. It does cost a hundred dollars to have a Steam dev app ID. So no worries if you can't, you can just test on 480. That is the free one. So now a few things from Steam Integration Kit, which have made this very a very easy process, is on their GitHub, they have this configuration page. So we just need to just copy paste a few of these. So I'll just copy paste this default platform services equals to Steam right above here. And then I'll add these two lines under my engine.engine. .engine. So right here is good. And then I'll look for IPNet driver. I think I have that. No, I don't. So I'm just gonna copy paste this whole thing here and the SteamNet driver. Because I actually let me check if I have Steam Net driver. I don't. So I'm just gonna copy paste the rest uh down here is fine. And I'll just add the console variables down here. And now I'll close the default.ini. And then I will also close this. So now what I'm gonna do is head over to edit, editor preferences, and down here where it says play in your level editor, next to additional launch parameters, I'm just gonna type type dash log and hit X. And now I'm gonna launch this as a standalone game just to test this out. So we're gonna see the logs being created. It's gonna launch this project. And now you'll see on the bottom right, my Steam Access Steam community shows up. And when I hit Shift Tab, you'll see this Code with Row Patreon is my Steam, my dummy Steam account. And it's playing this game called Code with Row Testing, which is what I named it on Steamworks. So that's perfect. But I do want to add a couple things to this so that we can have other players connect, AKA my one other testing account. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this and close this as well. And now let's just right click, create a user interface widget and a widget blueprint. And I'm just gonna call this something like matchmaking underscore WBP. 
and I'm double click to open this up. And while this is open, I'm just gonna add a canvas panel and a button and a text box or text block under the button like so. I'll click on my button and just hit size to content. And then for the text block, I'm gonna change this text to something like um, start matchmaking. And then I'll hover, I'll click button again and anchor this to the bottom middle zero. Actually, you know what? I'll do a bottom middle or just directly in the middle right here. Alignment will be 0.5 by 0.5 and I'll hit compile and save. And now I actually want to go into this widget blueprint. So what I want to do is click button and then scroll all the way down and click this event call on pressed. But first we need to set up our event construct, ignore tick. And with event construct, I'm just going to set input mode UI only. And for the player controller, I'm going to drag this out and get player controller. And afterwards, I'm going to set show mouse cursor. And I made, I need to uncheck this context sensitive to get that. And I'll select this to be true. And the target will also be the player controller. And that's all we need for our construct. And now down here, I'm actually going to right click and just check that context sensitive for now. I'm going to drag this out and I'm going to find SIK or Steam Integration Kit sessions like so. And you can see these settings there are max results. So how many lobby sessions do you want to show, land search, empty server, and so on. But in our case, we're actually going to drag out the session results and look for two things because there's only going to be one room. So I'm going to get a copy of the array, which is going to get that one room that's in here. And I also want to get is valid index. And this is going to be our branch to check our conditions. So I'm going to plug this into the success node here. And if this is true, so meaning if there already is a room set up, then we're just going to join that SIK session and the session name we can leave as game session. But if it's false, we're going to create a listen server session and this will make our own room. And I'll do number of public connections to five so that I can have five people playing at the same time. And when it's successful, we're going to execute a console command. So I'll do execute console command and the command will be server third person. Hold on. I didn't spell that right. If it's not spelled right, this is not going to work. Server third person map, which is the map name that we have on the top left or the, the one that's open already. Question mark. Listen. So this will listen for that server just so we can create a new server. And then I'll drag out, I'll drag down these extra settings and look for a make SIK create lobby settings. I'm going to expand this and set this number of private connections to be five and I'll leave the rest as default. This is good to me. So I'm going to hit compile and save. And now what I need to do actually is go back to my third person map and I'm going to create a new level and I'll call this something like match making map, just like this, double click this. And it's going to be an empty level, which is totally fine, but I'm actually going to write, I'm going to click on this blueprint and open the level blueprint like so. And all we need to do is on begin play, we're just going to create a widget and this widget will be this matchmaking WBP, which will allow our users to just go in and search for a game. I'm going to add this to the viewport and I'll just connect the return value to the target, hit compile, save, and we're done here. And what else I can do is I'll head back to that third person map click maps, click on third person map, and I'm going to open the level widget or the open level blueprint here as well. And for this one, I'm going to look for an event begin play and on begin play, I'm just going to get our steam username. So I'll do get steam persona name like so. And I'm just going to do the a print. I'm just going to do a print string for this, which will print the return value of whoever joins. And I'll do something like logged on. So if when the user logs on, I want to return a Boolean value. So I'm going to print string again and connect this like so. I'll have, I highlight over everything and click Q on my keyboard to straighten it out. Maybe space it out just to make it look neater. And I'll hit compile and save. And I'll go back to my third person map. And the last thing I need to do actually is just go over to my characters or actually third person folder. And then I'll go to blueprints and open up my BP third person character. Now on event begin play, I want to create a sequence and I'll uncheck this then zero and actually connect then one to cast to player controller for then zero. I'm just going to set input mode game only, and I'm going to show, show mouse cursor, uncheck context sensitive and set show mouse cursor like so. And I'm going to grab the player controller from here. So I'll just get player controller. And I'll connect the return value to the set show mouse cursor. I'll set this to true. And this is all we need to do for now. So what I'm going to do next is let's just try this out. So I'm going to start from my matchmaking map and hit play. And you want to launch it 
as a standalone game. So when you hit the three dots, select select standalone. And you'll see my character is just falling into space. I'm connected to Steam. When I click start matchmaking, it's going to look for a server if one's not already up. And it looks like it's failing to create a lobby. And that's because, let me show you why. And that's because in the BP, I messed up somewhere in the widget. Okay, I see. So in my execute console command, it's not just server. It's actually supposed to be server travel. So it's telling our character that we're supposed to go here. Make sure there's a space between server travel and third person map. Question mark, listen. And now when I hit play, it's going to launch our game and we're connected to Steam. And when I hit start matchmaking, we're going to be looking for a server and it'll log us in. It'll say true because that's our logged in print string. And then it would say code with row Patreon below, which is our persona, our Steam persona name. So that works. And now all we have to do, all you're supposed to do is go over to Steamworks if you're going to try this with another person. If you're using your own app ID, you can just invite your other account via email on Steamworks. And then you want to go to platform and you can package this up as a Windows. So I'll just use default. And if you package and your game is not launching, so what works for me is I actually just, so this has happened. I don't know why this happens to me. Maybe it's an engine bug or something or 5.4 issue. But when I package my project, it doesn't launch. And the way I make it launch is I have to go to tools and just add a blank C++ class, create class. It's going to add code to your project and that's totally fine. But this is what works for me. And it may not happen to you, but add C++ class and then it will and then you can package and stuff. You can recompile, rebuild, clean your project. And now it's gonna say, please close the editor and build from your IDE. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And once this is open, you just right click on your project name, not UE5, just your project name. So mine's SIKK, Steam Integration Kit Kit, for example. Right click and you're gonna do clean. And then we're gonna do rebuild after this cleaning's done. And it should work flawlessly. There's not going to be any C++ issues, I hope, because we haven't done anything to the C++. And make sure you close your project. And then I'll right click and I'll rebuild. And now once it's done rebuilding, I can just close this. And then after rebuilding, I'm just going to click build. And now it'll start building the game again and compiling everything. And it launches. I'll click on platform and I'm going to ship it on Windows. So I'm going to click Windows and package this project. And I can just use, use project setting. That's totally fine. And yeah, I think development is better in case you do need to see logs and so on. And if you have any logs or any issues, B-Tide Studios is a very, very supportive company. They will help you every step of the way. They help me a lot. And yeah, I can't thank them enough for it. So hit pa package project, go to desk. And once your file opens, I'm just going to save it to my desktop, hit select folder. And now it'll save in your Windows folder. I guess that's just the default thing. It's just called Windows. When you open this up, you will see this button. It's going to show like the Unreal Engine icon in black.exe format. So I'm just going to click, I just click view and then show file extensions if you want to see the .exe just to make it easier. I'll just double click to open this. And now this is going to open my game and I'll just hit start matchmaking. And now you'll see that it, it logs into this character and I can run around. So now I'm going to actually open up my laptop and try this with my other character. All right. And now I hit start matchmaking on my other account and he should spawn in just like that. And yeah, this is perfect. So my character, I'm, I'm using my laptop to run around. Um, I didn't fix any collision settings. So my camera kind of just showed the good stuff. Nice. And yeah, that's how you connect your Steam character using the Steam integration kit. We'll go over more in-depth stuff about this, like creating a lobby, seeing, being able to see multiple rooms and so on. But yeah, this is actually, <laughs> I don't know why, it's just a third-person map, but I, I love how this looks. But yeah, thanks for watching Code with Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.